Hey guys, what's up? Today we're gonna be working on something pretty cool and that is controlling your classic mini with an Android tablet. Let's get into it. So you may be wondering at this point how we're gonna control the mini with a Android uh, tablet or an Android phone. And that is because all Rover Minis and other Rover products of a certain vintage are fitted with the MEMS system. So MEMS stands for Modular Engine Management System. And basically it's a series of um, actuators and sensors that communicate with a centralized computer to run the car. And um, since this car, this particular car over here has fuel injection, it controls the fuel injection and the spark. So all pretty smart actually. And it's basically exactly like a modern car. Except in a modern car where it is OBD2 compliant, this vehicle is only OBD1. Even though it has a connector for OBD2, it's only OBD1 compliant. So what, what we're gonna have to do is build a special cable, which we're gonna show you how to do. And in this case, we're gonna build the MEMS 1.6 cable, which is gonna be the little round uh, connector by the clutch, uh, clutch slave, sorry, clutch master. Um, and there's also the MEMS 1.9, which looks more like an OBD2 connector, and I'll go under the dash. So they're a little bit different, but that being said, you can communicate with both of them using the Android tablet and the same app. So no matter what cable you build, you're gonna have, you're gonna be communicating it communicating with it in the same way. Alrighty, so now that we're back inside, I'm actually gonna show you how to build a cable to use it with the MEMS system. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the things that you need to get before you build a cable, or actually all the components to build a cable. And then also I'm gonna show you how to put it together and make sure that it lasts for a long time. So first off, I'm gonna show you the different components that you're gonna to need to build a cable. This is USB on one end, full size USB on one end and micro USB on the other. So this is the USB to go cable. And basically all it does is it allow you, allows you to have a full size USB port on your tablet. And here we have the, I believe this is USB to RS-232 cable. So this, the descriptions for all this will be in the description box below and the links will all be there. So you guys can look at them in detail there and shop around. So we have USB on one end and then four little plugs on this end. We're actually gonna have to clip these and put on um, these. So moving on to this, we have um, this connector here. So we have the connector that connects to the car and we have three little crimp connectors to go inside of here and we have some heat shrink. So that's gonna make this um, cable last nice and long and also be a little resistant to the elements, especially when we're working under the hood. So first things first, I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, strip the ends off of this cable right here. So on this cable, we only need um, three of the connectors and I'm actually gonna leave the connector that we're not using untouched so that it has a little bit of resistance to elements and also to shorting out on itself. So I'm gonna come back after this is all stripped. So as far as putting the uh, new connector on, I'm kind of just taking off a connector from this little set that we got, putting it on the end of the old one, leaving the old connector intact, and then just going ahead and crimping the end of it. And we're gonna finish up with the last one. I'm gonna show you how to get the connectors into the plug and which arrangement they should go in. So now that we've gotten our three connectors on the end of the cable, what we're gonna go ahead and do is put them into here. So basically, um, this is the best way I can kind of show you. So if you're looking at the plug top down, this is what you're gonna see. So you're gonna see one, two, and three slots for uh, terminals to go into, and then this slot is basically an empty space. So I'm trying to depict that to you so you can see what's going on. Um, Okay, so that's what's going on here. So we got the offset blank space here and then the three holes like that. That's gonna be black. This bottom left hole is gonna be white. And this hole over here is gonna be green. So here we are after we've inserted the uh, plugs into the harness. I'm sorry, on the top, we have the black wire. 
bottom left, we have the white wire, and bottom right, we have the um, green wire. And the red wire is kind of just floating in free space. So that matches up with this that we got here. So black on top, white on this side, and green on that side. So hopefully this all kind of makes sense. And one big thing I would say is to make sure that the uh, plugs seat all the way. Otherwise, this isn't gonna work and it's gonna be a dud, so. So now we've gone ahead and built, and built the cable. We're gonna show you how to use it. So I'm gonna open up the hood and show you where to plug that connector in on the 1.6, MEMS 1.6 vehicles. And then I'm gonna show you how to set up the app. So the more observant viewers out there might realize that this cable isn't the same one that I built. This one's a bit, a bit different and that is because the original cable that I bought was a cheap eBay cable and it was not compatible with the system. So I'm, not, I'm actually gonna link this down in the description below. Well, this part of it. Um, well, actually, this part of the cable I'm gonna link down below so you can build your cable properly and avoid all of the problems and frustration that I face using a cheaper cable. So, let's get it plugged in. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is the uh, is the connector on the car. And if you look at the um, connector here, you'll realize that there's kind of like a notched out part of it right here. And that corresponds with the notched out part or like an indented part over there. So basically just put two and two together. It's plugged in and you're ready to go on the car side and then we're gonna show you what to do on the app. So as you can see, we're all plugged in on that end. Follow the cable up. And we have our little USB on the go connector in between our cable and the tablet. And then we launch the tablet. And we can see two apps here. So one of those is the light version of the app. I would definitely recommend getting, um, getting that version before you pay the $14 for the paid version because it's gonna allow you to like test out the cable and everything to make sure it works before you go and spend some money on the app. So I'm gonna actually launch the app here. It's gonna open up like this and you're gonna wanna go, I guess on an Android tablet it'd be here and what you're looking for is preferences. And under here, um, you can change the sampling rate and everything. But you just want to make sure that the protocol version is correct for your ECU. So in this case, we have it on MEMS 1.6, which is MEMS 1.6. And then they have 1.3, 1.6, and 1.9. So you can do all that. And then we have some other stuff here that honestly I haven't touched yet. So I couldn't really tell you if it works. So you go ahead and once the cable is plugged in, you can click connect and then give the app access to the USB device. And there you go, we're getting a great response from the ECU. And we go over to grid view. It's gonna give us all of our parameters. So RPM, uh, manifold, manifold absolute pressure is what that one is, throttle position, sensor voltage, coolant, um, and so on and so forth. So you can see that it's actually updating pretty frequently. About, I would say every one and a half seconds because that's what we have it set up for right now and that is pretty much what the cable is happy doing. So yeah, and then if we go over, if, you, if you're in the paid version, you can go over to tune view and then click something that you want to tune. So if I can get this to focus. So right now we're in idle target RPM. We have a few other things here, although we're going to do the RPM because that's something that you can actually hear. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and then maybe you can hear the change in RPM. Okay, so final thoughts on the MEMS system and using a Android tablet with it. It's a little bit of work to build a cable, although you can buy a pre-built cable, but it's literally, I think, nine or 10 times more expensive than building it yourself. So I'd, re I'd recommend building it yourself. If you, if you saw the video and you think you could do it, I recommend trying it. So 
fun, like finishing thoughts on it, it's super easy to use and it actually gives you quite a bit of information that's really useful when, um, you know, taking care of your mini. So for me, I had an issue with overheating and I actually used this app to check when the thermostat was opening up. And I found out that I had a faulty thermostat even after I put in a brand new one. So this app saved me a bunch of, you know, physical, going in there, taking out the thermostat and testing it that way. I literally just plugged the app in and I checked when the thermostat was opening up. That's how easy it was. You can also check for faulty sensors. Um, I've seen a lot of people check the Lambda sensor, which in, I guess in North America, we call the O2 sensor, or that might be the newer name for it. So the O2 sensor in these cars, because it has fuel injection and um, automated like ignition timing, it uses a coil path instead of like a coil and ignition leads in the distributor. Those sensors can go bad. Um, the throttle and sorry, the uh, camshaft position and the crankshaft position sensors can go bad and cause a lot of issues. And you can literally just use this app and t and see exactly what's going on with your car. So I think it's really pretty much invaluable if you have an SPI or MPI Mini or any other Rover product that uses the system. And I just think that it's it's really awesome. So if you have any questions, feel free to go put them in the comments. Um, one thing I will say is uh, you need an Android tablet that it has USB host access or an Android phone for that matter. So that's going to be anything with a um, Android 3.1 I believe and higher. So nowadays I think we're in Android 6 or 7, I don't know, I'm not really into Android but I don't think it's going to be a problem finding a tablet or a phone that is... Um, that like meets that specification. So I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave the links in the description for the USB adapter I'm using, the USB cable I'm using, and also the connector. And also I'm gonna be leaving um, the link for the MEMS Diagnostic Blogspot page because there's a lot of useful information on there about tuning. So go ahead and check that out. And thank you for watching my video. If you enjoy what I do here and you enjoy doing little projects with the Mini. I would really recommend to subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next video.